Hello, testing, testing, testing. Hello, testing. Good morning. <clears throat> Today is uh, Saturday, September 18th, 2021. It is our regular Saturday yoga therapy class. Today's class, I'm in a different setup. I'm in Maryland. Uh, I'm in my daughter's home. It is their uh, gymnasium and yoga room. Today's topic is uh, yoga therapy, breath and its role. So we are going to talk about today the healing power of breath. We're going to talk about all the myth about breath. And we're going to show you the healing power of breath and we're showing you the practice of breath or called pranayama for different chronic lifestyle related disorders. The first, as you all know, as you describe every day, yoga therapy is the philosophy called Yoga Sutra of Pitanjali. It's 196 aphorisms of which 193 is to quiet down your mind. It is a practice called eight limbs practice, Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, eight limbs, Yam, social restraint, Niyam, personal restraint, Asana, external and internal alignment, Pranayama is a voluntary regulated breathing. That's what we're going to talk about today, Pranayama. Prana is a life force, it is subtle energy, which keeps us awake, alert, alive. Breath is not the prana. Breath is the carrier of the prana. Metaphorically, if you think the breath is like your electric cable and prana is your the electricity it is carrying. Yama means control and restraint. So pranayama basically means voluntary regulated breathing. Fifth limb is called your pratahara, control of your senses. Sixth is the dharan, which is the focus. Seventh is a meditation that is called dhan. And eighth is samadhi, it's a union of your body, mind, and spirit. So as a part of the therapeutic effect of yoga, as we always say, the final effect is a meditation, which is seventh limb. And we call meditation is the medication. So the meditation is a seventh limb. So if you think about a therapy in Western term, suppose yoga therapy is like a, like a pill. So asana will be like the pill. Pranayama will be the active ingredients and meditation will be the mechanism of action. That's what you see 
in any kind of medication. What is the ingredient? What is the mechanism of action? So let's look at, look at all the myths we have. The first, the word is used inappropriately, is called breathing exercise. This is not an exercise in relation to your healing. See, exercise is a muscle contraction. Exercise is a sympathetic overdrive. Exercise is increasing your heart rate, increasing your respiratory rate, increasing your blood pressure, increasing the muscle tone. And when you get a high sympathetic overdrive, the body balances with a parasympathetic tone. So when you do exercise, you try to see how fast my pulse rate is coming down. Very important. It is a sympathetic overdrive followed by parasympathetic activation. But for yoga therapy, it's a relaxation response. It is a relaxation of the skeletal muscles and smooth muscles and activation of the parasympathetic tone. So what you see, if you do a breathing exercise, that means if you do a very rapid breathing, so give an example, if you do a very rapid bastrika, I'm doing here. If you do it very rapidly, which is called, as they call a breathing exercise, it is going to have a harmful effect on your body and mind. In a pranayama as a healing, it has to be an effortless breathing and it has to be without any huffing, puffing, without any strain, without any pain. So what does it mean? It means when you have a chronic lifestyle related disorders for which a yoga therapy, primarily a pranayama or a breathing or a role of breathing has been, a, been prescribed for you, you should start doing it very slowly and effortlessly. What is the effortlessly? First, there is no pain. Effortless breathing means you are able to talk, you are able to sing. If you're able to sing when you're doing a pranayama practice, that is the beginning of pranayama. Now we see people doing a very rapid pranayama. We do a Kapalbhati pranayama. Yes, we can do it. But say I'm talking, I'm singing, I'm effortless. What happens, the breathing is from your skeletal muscles called muscles of respiration. And the skeletal muscles are trainable. Skeletal muscles are trainable to the point, it's like your, like your uh, say, your uh, skeletal muscles for say, weight training, okay? So say I have a, just simply, I have a little five pounds of weight, okay? So I will be doing, so generally what we do before a muscle contracts, we breathe out first, take a breath in. So I'll breathe out first, take a deep breath in. Breathing out, I'm going to let the muscle work. So breathe in, breathe out. We generally do it both the hands. And essentially, within a short time, you develop that neuroplasticity. The muscle is going to be working. We go next. This is five. Next one is eight. Eight pounds. I'll go to the eight pounds. And I'm doing eight pounds after a while. I will be able to go to 15 pounds. Then I'll go to 15 pounds, 20 pounds, 25 pounds. 
it gradually will be able to get up. Same way, the muscles of respiration, the so chest muscles, neck muscles, and your muscles of the upper torso, it has to be first relaxed, that it has to have a, a strength. Interestingly, in yoga therapy practice, when you practice an asana, you develop a flexibility, you develop proper shape of your body, and you develop the strength throughout the whole body. People ask me, I'm doing a Moirasan, pick up pose. You have to have a hand strength. It's not the hand strength. You keep on doing a set of yoga asanas completely effortlessly. You will see your whole body get relaxed, your whole arm, your leg, all of them, the strength and flexibility comes and you will be able to do it. So the first concept, this is a voluntary regulated breathing. And for the healing purposes, you have to do the whole pranayama practice completely effortlessly and in stages. When you do a very rapid pranayama, rapid breathing, what you call a breathing exercise, yes, you, may, you need it. That is called hypoxia, low oxygen in your body. What hypoxia does, hypoxia helps stimulating your strength and stamina. When you need a strength and stamina, yes, you do huffing, puffing. See, people are running, you know, as fast as possible. They're giving push-ups. The world record came up nine hours, you know, he, he was doing a one marine, was doing a push-ups. But that is to build your strength and stamina. But for healing, it has to be called an effortless ease. Why? The, the, the condition is called the dis-ease. If you spell the disease, D-I-S, spell E-A-S-E, dis-ease. -E. So effortless ease is your therapy. So the breath and its role is that first breathing has to be done with a completely relaxed muscles of respiration. Breathing has to be done with a complete quieting down your mind. Breath is the connector between your body and mind. Metaphorically, if you're flying a kite, if you have the roller with the thread, if the roller is the body, and if the kite is your mind, the thread connecting the roller and the kite is your breath. Breath is the connector for body and mind. So what are the fundamental preparation for using the healing power of breath to bring the body in completely relaxed state your first requirement will be your spine straight when you keep your spine straight remember all the muscles called paraspinal muscles relaxes when the paraspinal muscle relaxes the whole body starts to relax Second, you have to be in a seated posture. If you're sitting in a chair, keep your chair with the spine straight. Okay? And you are in an asana. At asana is called what yoga therapy gave us the name called sthiram sukham asana. Sthiram means stillness. Here I'm sitting in a cross-legged position. I am very still. I don't have that fasciculation. Sukham, I'm happy the way I'm sitting down. Asana is a pose. Next day, do when I do it, I change my foot and I try to activate both sides of my brain. Change my foot. 
spine straight posture is your sthiram stillness sukham happiness asana is a pose third component is relaxation of the muscles of respiration which are upper chest muscles and also neck muscles you will see people who are doing a effort in breathing like a person who has an asthma when they breathe mm -hmm. So you will see that these are called accessory, <coughs> accessory muscles of respiration and accessory muscles of respiration accent. Final concept is lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. It needs 1.5 liter to keep it open. It's like a balloon. 4.5 liter air can be exchanged with the breath, which is called vital capacity. And in our normal breathing, what is called a tidal volume, we only exchange 500 cc, 0.5 liter. So we have about 80 to 90% reserve in the lung. So learn how to breathe out first. When you breathe out first, you empty that lung. You take a deep breath in slowly without any effort. Breathe out longer than breathing in, preferably one and a half times. Somebody's sending a message here, just one second. Yes, it's okay. Okay, so let's do it first. Practice. Remember, as I said, yoga therapy. 99% practice, 1% talking. The first relaxation in the hand, hand relax, baby fist. Take your hand, take a thumb inside and close. Keep doing your fist like this throughout the whole day. Don't close your hand like this. Take your thumb inside and close. Initially, thumb will be here, but slowly and slowly, it'll go all the way down. Do the breath, you can put it here in front. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out and close your fist. It's called Adhi Mudra. It opens the upper part of the lung. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Two other mudras, if you touch your index finger and thumb and put your hands down, this is called a chin mudra. It opens the lower part of the lung. Take your hands, close the other finger down, call it chin mai mudra. It opens the middle part of the lung. We do it in a, our chanting or a pranayama. It's called your pranavo pranayam. A Uma. We'll do it at the finish. We'll finish today. Whole upper body get relaxed. We call Pashim Namaskar. Put your hands in the back slowly and slowly get into a prayer pose. It's called prayer pose to the back. And I have shown you so many times. Let me show you again. And you will see that how beautiful it is and why it makes a, so much of a relaxation. Take your hand here. Slowly see if you can put your hands together. Keep it at one spot. Just close your eyes and do your breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Easily you can do count of two in, count of four out. Breathe out first. 
count of two in, one and two in, count of four out, one and two and a three and a four. After a short time, you'll see your hand is start to going to go high up. Stay here a little longer with your eyes closed. Stay here a little, a little longer with your spine straight. Stay here a little longer with your breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Your hand will go high up a little bit more. Relaxation response is setting in and I can feel very clearly my breathing is also getting a lot more effortless and my breathing is also getting deeper and deeper. And I stay in this posture. Remember in asana the three stages. Beginning is called the arumbho, the beginning. Muscle contracts and let you come in. After a while, the muscle starts to relax. Before relaxation, there is some fasciculation. Fasciculation goes away, it's called sthiti, stillness. Then you get a profound relaxation, which is called a visharjan. Arumbho, beginning, sthiti, stillness, visharjan, profound relaxation. When you get a profound relaxation, and that is the state you want to be in your breathing practice or pranayama practice. Next is the tight part is our neck. You do relaxation of your neck, called a Brahma Mudra. Four postures and do the breathing. Put your hand in the back. Slowly put it in a prayer pose to the back. Incorporate the four posture of the neck. From the center, you breathe out first. Slowly take a deep breath in, drop your neck to the back. Breathe out, slowly drop your neck in the front and listen to your body signal. No pain and effortless breathing. If you develop any pain, if you develop any effort in breathing, you back off. But stay there. If you stay there here, in a short time, you'll see your neck will come down a little bit more. Then will be more. I have a serious neck problem because of surgeon. We are operating like this. We never pay, take care of our neck and the back. My x-rays MRI showed, you know, almost like a fused vertebra. My neck doesn't have too much of a movement, but I do. I do this every single day. So I don't have that pain, which is called a cervical radiculopathy. That means pain which comes from the nerve roots. Remember the spinal stenosis, uh, herniated disc, those does not cause any pain. What causes pain is the irritation of the nerve. And you will see my neck doesn't even move too much, but I do it all the time because it's relaxation. Breathe in, breathe out. If you're doing it with me, try. Then put on your neck on head on both sides. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, breathe out on the side, all the way down. As far as you can do. Stiffness in the neck will be there, but the muscles are going to get relaxed. Like in the middle. Breathe in, drop it opposite side, breathe out.
Look at the back without turning your shoulder. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. One more time to the right side. When you rotate your neck from left to the back to the right and right to the back to the left. Drop your head down, breathe out first, take a deep breath in. Opposite side. Now my physical body is ready. Mind is also ready because when you pay attention to your breath, the breath connects between your body and mind, mind quite down. The first practice you do, you breathing out longer than breathing in. Let's practice together. If you're sitting down, spine straight, use the hand as a Adhi Mudra. That is a mudra, really helps in your breathing and helps in your relaxation. See, babies, babies are all relaxed because babies' hands are always like this. It's called a baby fist. Balo Mushti Mudra. We'll go in stages and we'll demonstrate what the stages looks like and how it does healing. Breathe out first. Breathe in with a count of two in. Breathe out with a count of four out. Very easy for me and easy for you too. Close your eyes, pay attention to your breath. Let me show you how we do the increment. You also do increment, but without any effort. Let me do it, show it to breathe out first with a count of four in, count of eight out. I do everything silently, so it puts a concentration to my mind. Very simple, count of four in, count of eight out. Also notice, when you start doing this, you also develop that phenomenon neuroplasticity and your breathing becomes like this and you will be even breathing like this when you are even sleeping. I sleep all the time and I hear, wife will tell me, yes, your exhalation now is longer than inhalation. If you look at a baby, Baby does abdominal breathing, baby does same thing. Let me progress a little bit more. Count of six in, count of 12 out.
Very nice. So think about it. When you're able to do a count of five in, count of 10 out. So one breath is 15 seconds. So in one minute, your breathing rate is already dropped down to fold. Normal breathing rate is about 15 to 16 per minute. And we've seen in the nature, the animal who has a very slow breather, they live longer. Animals are rapid breather, they die early. We can do easily after longer practice, count of 10 in, count of 20 out. So able to do a 30 seconds for a breathing cycle with only two breaths per minute. And the breaths are so quiet that you don't even hear. I have the yoga sitting next to me breathing. I don't even see, I don't even hear their breathing. Okay, let me show you count of 18, count of 16 out. This was count of 18, count of 16 out. Inhalation is sympathetic, exhalation is parasympathetic. So when you have a people with a chronic lifestyle related disorder, which is called disorder from our stress, and the stress is from high sympathetic tone, we only tell them, sit down in a chair, or if you can sit down in the ground, keep your spine straight, do the breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in. We have amazing experience and amazing even in the research. We have seen, we have hundreds and hundreds of people who do go bed better, just able to relax the physical body and able to activate the parasympathetic tone. So all the disease of your stress, metabolic syndrome, truncal obesity, diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, which is called a heart disease, blockage of the heart arteries and peripheral arteries, high cholesterol, dyslipidemia, high triglyceride, low HDL, the good cholesterol. These are all lifestyle related disorders. Next, for the pulmonary diseases, for the pulmonary diseases, you do what is called your Bastrika Pranayama. Bastrika is a bellows. What is a bellows? We are from the city dwellers, you know, we have not seen the bellows. Bellows is you use for your fireplace or use for your blacksmith. So bellows will be active filling up and rapid emptying. Inhalation, exhalation. So the Bastrika Pranayama primarily will be like breathe out first, take a deep breath in, then breathe out. I'm giving a very simple example so that you can you can do it very slowly and effortlessly. For so for the people who are really have a lot of disease called rogi. People who have a, 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 a rogi, what they will do, they will be 
your doing it very slowly and effortlessly how they will be doing it they can put their hands high up and say breathe in breathe out I can feel that I have a lot more air coming out, a lot more air going in. Sorry, I just have a... So, when you do this Bastrika, slowly and effortlessly, you can get into, in stages, you can get into slowly and slowly, a slower pace, middle pace, and a more space. Very good for people with asthma, people with uh, your uh, pulmonary fibrosis, people with COPD. So let me show you. We generally practice first very slowly, a slow 20 counts, a medium 20 counts, and a rapid 20 counts. We put it as a one cycle, then we keep doing it for three cycles, four cycles, based on how transformation has taken place from a disease called rogi to nirogi with a no disease and a yogi so let me show you just a simple example i want to do it home on more but you are seeing it so i'll do 10 slow 10 medium 10 fast so here is 10 slow so the breathe out first my eyes are closed It is faster, 10 at a medium pace. Then we'll do 10 at a very rapid speed. You start with this. So I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm effortless. Increase slowly, go to 10 to 12 or 10 to 15, see if you can still do effortlessly. We've been doing it for so long. As I said, we do 20, 20, 20, we do two, three, four, five cycles without any effort, without any losing any pain. Another way to do a very rapid Vastrika Pranayama, but that comes when you are becoming like a yogi and start doing yoga practices. So people like us, a lot of other people like us, with multiple medical problems, multiple medical issues, 
we have overcome all of them, feel good, feel happy. But what do you do with your daily practice? So I'm going to show you a little sample. And if you can do it, if you can do it with me, it would be fine. But do it later on and see how fast and rapid Bastrika we do and what is the effect. So think about, think about a person who is dying. Person who is dying, what happened? The last breath comes out. It's called, patient is expired. Then the lung stops. When the lung stops, then the heart stops. When the heart stops, then the brain stops. When the brain stops, the cellular function stops. Body becomes cold and we pronounce the person dead. If you improve the lung function, if you're able to do all the functions of the lung effortlessly, a lot, rapidly, the way we'll show it to you, your heart will get better, brain will get better, all the cellular function will get better. Cells will produce more antibodies. Cells will produce more interleukin, tumor necrosing factor, you name it, they will do it. So here is the example. Eyes closed, spine straight. I did 200 of them. I'm still talking, I'm singing, totally effortless. So what does it mean? I've been doing it for a long, long time. And this is my normal breathing cycle. May not be for you when you start, and then it becomes sympathetic. When it becomes sympathetic, it's going to hurt you. So there is a very common saying in yoga community, don't practice pranayama, it's going to hurt you. Always practice pranayama with the proper guidance, with the proper teacher. Proper guidance is you, you are your own teacher. Listen to your body signal and progress rapidly. We do 500, 600 like this very easily. Lung function gets better, heart gets better, brain gets better, cellular function gets better. End of my therapy. Going against the grain of your habit is yoga. I don't know if you know any time, Mark Twain said, to have be healthy and to be well. Eat the food which you don't want. Drink the liquid which you don't like. Do the work which you don't want to do. I would say is you put a food in your mouth, if a food tastes good, spit it out. Going against the grain of your habit. I love to walk in the beach. I go to the Virginia Beach, I love, love to walk 
in front of the ocean. It's great. Please also walk in downtown. Love to walk in the downtown. Balance. Next practice is called a Kapal Bhati Pranayama. Kapal is a forehead, Bhati is a shiny. We have a balloon, abdominal cavity, there's a diaphragm, there's a balloon in the lung, and we have our awareness in the belly button. Push the belly button to the back, it hits the diaphragm, hits the lung, all the air comes out. Active exhalation, passive inhalation. There is no inhalation at all. Inhalation is between the exhalation without knowing. Remember, the way you were, the day you were born, took a deep breath in. Nobody taught you how to breathe in. You learn how to breathe out. We have the hand mudras. This is called Dhanu Mudra or Gyanu Mudra. It quiets down our pitta. It quiets down our mind. This is a meditation mudra. Put your index finger down and thumb is called a Vayu Mudra. It balances our pitta, pitta related disorders, controls our pain, musculoskeletal disorders. Middle finger and thumb, Shunna Mudra. It is, helps in hearing. Ring finger and thumb, Prithvi Mudra. It's grounding. It is a, balances your kapha related disorders. And also, it is very good for diabetes, obesity especially trunkal obesity. Little finger and thumb, Varun Mudra. It helps balancing your body fluid. It also helps in your bladder function. Women with a incontinent bladder, they get a very much continent with the Varun Mudra. It helps perfusion of the skin and the various organs of the body. Ring finger, little finger and thumb, Shakti Mudra. This is called your strength. I came in the morning, you don't feel strength, the Shakti Mudra. Middle finger, ring finger and thumb, Apna Mudra. Pashan Mudra, it's called a digestion mudra. It digests all the excess chemicals in our body. Everything excess in our chemistry, blood chemistry, high sugar, high cholesterol, high uric acid, everything. It is an improper digestion of our food. And these are the toxic material from the food called ama, which is going into your blood. Index finger down. And the apna mudra is called apna vayu mudra. This is for your heart and lung function. Lot of other mudras, but you see, this is called a linga mudra. It warms up your body. It helps in your removing your phlegma. The children do it all the time when they're having a, some phlegma coming out. Called Ganesh mudra, remove out of obstacle. So when you touch the other two, this is your Vayana mudra. It helps in circulation. Udana mudra, they're all in my book and in my basically mudra is a neurophysical connector connects your mind and body to put take the prana the life force to the appropriate organ of healing so what do you do we do pranayama do the mudras we said we get a synergistic effect or double effect what do you say you do both together so let me show you we do a lot we do about 50 100 in each mudra kapalbhati pranayama if you're doing with me, sit down in a cross-legged position if you can. And also, I'm very relaxed. I can go a little bit more. This is called your Ardha Padmasan. And then you can do a Padmasan also. And let me show you just a 20 in each address. And then you will see I don't have any inhalation. It's all exhalation. Eyes are closed. Keep your spine straight. Bring your awareness in the belly button. Push the belly button to the back. It's 
So all I'm doing, pushing my belly button, my air is coming out, I'm not breathing, I'm breathing in between without knowing. So we're new to the practice, you can put your hand in the belly button, push it back, so the air will come out. Change your mudra, Vayu mudra, and I'll tell you the benefit of this, and you keep on doing it 20 in each mudra, and I'll change my hand too. It massages all the intra-abdominal organs. Massages your liver, massages your stomach, massages your spleen, massages your pancreas, massages your small intestine, massages your large intestine, massaging your kidneys. For the women, it massages your uterus, tubes, and ovaries. Switch your mudra again. For the men, it massages your prostate gland. You'll see people with a enlarged prostate. We let them do Kapalbhati Pranayama with a mudra called a Varun Mudra, touching index finger and the little, sorry, touching thumb and the little finger. Change it to a Prithvi Mudra. This is for diabetes and for truncal obesity. Remember, it massages your stomach. It ignites your Agni, the digestive fire in your stomach. Jathar Agni. So sugar get digested. It's a therapy for diabetes. It also massaging your diaphragm. Massaging diaphragm, the two nerves called the vagus nerve, anterior and posterior vagus nerve at the gastroesophageal junction. When it stimulates that, you get a parasympathetic activation. Massages your pancreas. Massages your diaphragm. Varun mudra. This is good for your men with a prostate problem, women with a incontinent bladder. When it massages the diaphragm, it also massages the lung. Massages lower part of the lung, and the air comes out. Shakti mudra, the strength. In between the lung, you have the heart. It massages the heart. When the heart has a problem, even though when heart stops, we do a CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Massaging the heart from outside. Massaging the heart from inside. We call it internal CPR. Very good for people with heart disease, very slow, Kapalvati Pranayama. Apna Mudra, a Pachan Mudra. It is a parasympathetic activation. See, I have a saliva in my mouth. My mouth is wet. I've been talking to you for last one hour. I didn't take any water, nothing, but my mouth is still full of saliva. Parotid glands are supplied by parasympathetic nerve. When you have a fear and sympathetic overdrive, you develop your dry mouth. Index finger down, good for your cardiopulmonary function. If a heart problem, lung problem, do the Kapalvati Pranayama, which is called a Ridai Mudra. Linga Mudra, 
We do daily practice, one hour of practice, 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. Kapalbhati pranayama, initially we do as much you can do without any effort. Could be 30 seconds, could be a minute. Essentially, we do five to 10 minutes. I do generally 500 to 1000 every single day. Giving a sample with how to do the mudras. Then we incorporate breath holding. What we first do, breath holding in exhalation, which is called your Udiyani ban, the abdominal lock. Breath holding in inhalation also with another lock called a Jalandhar Bandha. It's called your chin lock. That's called a Mursha Pranaya. And then you move your abdominal wall back and forth called a Agni Kriya. Breath holding and exhalation, which is your abdominal lock with the bone. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. In a normal practice, I do this with any bond, abdominal lock, then I incorporate the Jalandhar Bandha chin lock, then I also contract my anal sphincter pelvic floor and pull it up. I do a root lock, Mula band. I do call a Maha band or a Great Lock. Let me show you one time how I do, I do without any talking, and it's a wonderful practice. I'll first incorporate your abdominal lock with any bone, then a chin lock, jalandhar bone, then a root lock. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in. When you do these three locks together, Mahaband, with the breath holding and exhalation, you develop a resilience in your body and mind. No disease is going to come to you. We incorporate a breath holding also in inhalation, which is called Abhuntur in Kumbhak. And when you do breath holding and inhalation, lung starts to expand. When it comes to the, at least at the chest wall, there is some ribs, cannot expand anymore, then it starts to recoil back. It's called a herring brewer reflex, and it is mediated through vagus nerve. So you get a vagal activation. It is so relaxing, it is called a murcha pranaya. Murcha means unconscious. Let me show you again. Do your dhano mudra, it's called meditation mudra, index finger and thumb, put it both over your knees. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath with the chin lock. And keep counting as long as you can hold.
Normally is a nice breath holding in inhalation about 30, 30 seconds. 40 seconds is good. 45 seconds is great. Minute will be super. Breath holding and exhalation, 20 seconds is good. 15 seconds even is good. 20 seconds is great. 30 seconds will be super. You name a disease, it is going to, it is activates your digestive fire. It's your tejas. That's what you, we're glowing around you. That's what is called a kapal bhati. That means there is a light around your forehead. If you keep on doing your yoga practices, people who have not seen you before will say, you know, it looks like you are glowing. Activating both sides of our brain is a therapy. We are lateralized. I'm right-handed. I'm right-footed. I do not, I always get activate my left side of the brain, which is analytical brain. Right side is your intuitive brain. Alternate nostril breathing. Hands again in your Dhanu mudra, Rikyanu mudra, the right hand to close your right nostril. Don't have to push all the way down, just put underneath their nose just to close it. Breathe out your left nostril first. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril with the ring finger and little finger and breathe out your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close your right nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. If you're doing it with me, keep doing it with your eyes closed, spine straight. And let me tell you the benefit. Left nostril is controlled by the right brain. Right brain is intuitive, right brain is female, right brain is artistic. Right brain is cooling, right brain is parasympathetic. Left nostril breathing is called Chandranari. Moon energy is also called parasympathetic cooling. Right nostril is controlled by the left brain. Left brain is analytical, left brain is heating, left brain is male, left brain is sympathetic. Right nostril breathing is called suranari, sun energy, sympathetic. Slowly bring your index finger and your middle finger in the third eye. Close your eyes, bring your awareness to your third eye, left hand, hold in your right ear lobe. When you cross your hand and hold the yellow, it activates opposite side of the body. This is the your basis of called super brain yoga. Your super brain yoga, focus into third eye, keep on doing alternate nostril breathing. In a short time, you don't even know where you are. You are in a profound level of transcendental state. You enter into meditation even without knowing. It activates both sides of the brain. It's very good people who loses a focus. Very good to improve your memory. Very good for dementia. Very good for Alzheimer's disease. Very good for activating both side emotion related disorders like heart disease, hypertension, it's a wonderful practice. Unulom vilom pranayama. You can also do with your breath holding. What you do breath holding, you do a mudra called a 
touch your ring finger, little finger and thumb. Put it on your nostril. It generally is a one is to four is to two. Breathe in with a count of four in. Hold your breath for count of 16. Breathe out with a count of eight. When you're comfortable, then you can increase. Breathe in count of five. Hold count of 20. Then over 10. Let me show you one time how to do it with the one is to four is to two. Breathe out first. Breathe in through the left nostril with a count of four in. Hold your breath for count of 16. Breathe out with a count of eight out. Breathe in with a count of five in. Hold your breath for a count of 20. Breathe out with a count of 10 out. Wonderful breath holding. Inhalation, retention, exhalation, and suspension. In Sanskrit, inhalation is called puroka. Holding your breath after inhalation is called abhantarin kumbhak. Exhalation is called rechak. And breath holding after exhalation is called bajukumbhak. A simplest way to do the breath holding is called sabitri pranayama. Sabitri pranayama, you do a breath hold. You can do equally or you can do one is to two is to two is to one. Like you can breathe in for count of four in, hold for count of eight, breathe out for a count of eight, and then hold it for count of four. You can increase it. So simply, that is very good when you're beginning for your pulmonary problem. Let me show one example of Sabitri Pranayama. Breathe in with a count of four in. Hold for count of eight. Breathe out for a count of eight. Hold for a count of four. So breathe in with a count of four in. Hold for a count of eight. Breathe out with a count of eight. Then hold for a count of four. This is followed with the quieting down your mind, which is called your Brahmri Pranayam, Bumblebee breathing. In a Brahmri Pranayam, we have five senses. I hear, I see, I smell, I taste and touch. We close all of our five senses. Then we create a frequency. Create a frequency which has the same frequency as our body and the brain. Two frequencies interacts. It's called your harmonic resonance quite stone your mind. And the bumblebee breathing, Brahmri Pranayama, is followed by your pumping and cupping. And we'll show it to you how to do it. Let's do it one practice and do it a little bit more. We do about three, four, seven, ten. Like every morning I will do a I will do a Udyani band, like suck your stomach in, then you do Agni Sar Kriya. I move your abdomen. I do it between your eight to 10 times between the two, four and four, sometimes five and five. It's a very nice practice. By the time you do it in the morning, it feels so great. 
Index finger in your forehead, three fingers to close your eyes, thumb to close your ear. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in through your nostril. Breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. Mm. Then do coming and cupping. Take both the hands, keep rubbing your hands. Keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, take both the hands, use like a cup, put it over your eyes like a cup, and let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. Eyes have the muscles which are supplied by the four cranial nerves. Eyes have an optic nerve which supplies your retina in the back. SO4 LR6, the two muscles, superior oblique muscles supplied by the four cranial nerve, lateral rectus muscle supplied by six cranial nerve, the rest of the eye supplied by the trigeminal nerve, fifth cranial nerve. The ciliary muscles which holds the lens, which gets relaxed, you get a better vision, it improves your vision. Massage your forehead, massage your eyes, massage your face. All the muscles here are attached to the skin. By the time these muscles are relaxed, all of your lines in the forehead, all of your lines in the face goes away. Massage the back of your ear, front of your ear. In fact, inside your ear canal, these are called the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. Activate vagus. Hand down, massage your both sides of the neck. These are called carotid sinus. The carotid sinus relaxes and quiets down your cardiovascular system, nervous system. It's a vagal activation. Take your hands to the back, massage in the back, which is the insertion of your trapezius muscle, sternomastoid muscle. Both the muscles are supplied by the cranial nerve. When the cranial nerves are relaxed, your whole brain function relaxes. Very important pranayama to quiet down your mind and the mind-related disorders. Next is the Ujjayi pranayama. Ujjayi pranayam is basically a gentle relaxation of the larynx. Try to breathe in, which is called a resistive inhalation. You are trying to breathe in against resistance. You can do it very gently. We call it a, like a uh, Darth Vader breathing, or it is the uh, your sound of your ocean, ocean breathing. Slowly and slowly tightened up a little bit more. Larynx is supplied by your superior laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal nerve. Superior laryngeal nerve comes from the vagus nerve. Inferior laryngeal comes from your recurrent laryngeal, actually recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, comes from your <clears throat> from the vagus nerve around the subclavian artery it comes back higher supplies the all intrinsic muscle of the larynx so when you constrict slowly it activates those nerves and it's a vagal activation when the vagal is activated 80 percent is afferent that means the signal goes to the brain and 20 percent comes as the efferent it comes out it comes out to a nerve called a hypoglossal nerve, a tongue, so pushes the tongue in front, and also comes out to a nerve called a glossopharyngeal nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve supplies your soft palate. Soft palate has the two muscles called palatopharyngeus and palatoglossus, which is called a snoring. Tightens the soft palate, snoring is gone, pushing the tongue in the front. It is a wonderful therapy for your sleep apnea. The disease we have today is an insomnia and sleep apnea. Insomnia and sleep apnea activates our limbic system, activates our hypothalamus, activates our pituitary adrenal axis, causing a high cholesterol, 
high sympathetic overdrive, all the disease called a lifestyle related disorders. The Brahmri Pranayam, Bumblebee is for your insomnia and Ujjayi Pranayam is your for sleep apnea. We incorporate Ujjayi Pranayam with a chin lock, Jalandhar Ban, bringing a chin down to your chest. Then you incorporate with a left nostril breathing. It's called Chandra Vedi Pranayam. Remember, vagal activation, chin lock, vagal activation, left nostril breathing, vagal activation. Cannot have any better vagal activation than a Ujjayi Pranayam with chin lock and left nostril breathing. Let me show you one time how to do it. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Wow, can't have any better practice than this. Tighten up your larynx slowly, resistive inhalation, chin lock, activating carotid sinuses, left nostril breathing, activating right side of the brain. This also builds up your lung, it's called resistive exhalation, it's called shankha pranayam, like blowing a conch shell. When you blow a conch shell, the lung gets better. So the way you do it, you do a, like a baby fist in both hands, put one on the top. Remember, you always breathe through your nostril. When you breathe through your nose, the air goes through your nostril, and we'll talk about it. Nose is, that filters the air. It is like a personal air conditioner. Outside air is warm, it will cool it down. Outside is air is cool, it will warm it up. It, the air goes on the side of the nostril called turbinate. It goes over the mucosa of the sinuses secretes a substance called nitric oxide, then the air will go in into the larynx. If you breathe in through your mouth, you don't know where the air has gone. Go to the stomach, go to the lung. Somebody who said, I have to breathe through my mouth, then you can breathe in through your nostril, breathe out through your mouth. But we use the mouth breathing for your Two things, you know, one is called a Sitali Pranayam, we cool down our body, and they call it Shankha Pranayam, this is called your conch shell, blowing the conch shell. The way you do it, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and blow through your mouth against the resistance. People always ask me, how many times, how long? I said, there is no rule of thumb here for healing. Healing is your doing it completely effortlessly. If you can do it effortlessly three times, five times, good. Don't go overboard. Three times, five times is good, complete effortlessly. But if you can do one time effortlessly, do it. I could do it for a long time. I could do it 30 seconds very easily. 
Sitali pranayam, sitkari pranayam, shodanto pranayam. It cools down your body. Very good for women with hot flushes, people with the, your gastroesophageal reflux, pitta disorder, inflammatory disorder. Again, you're doing through the breathing through your mouth, but not for the breathing purpose, it's quite down. Stick your tongue out, roll your tongue, and breathe in through a rolled tongue. Close your mouth, breathe out your nostril. Do it few times. Again, completely effortlessly. Within a few times, your body becomes completely cool down. Somebody says, I cannot stick my tongue. It's called your sitkari breathing. Breathe through your, breathe through your teeth. Close your mouth. Breathe out first. Breathe through your teeth. Shodanta pranayam, you put your tongue high up and then breathe through the side of your tongue. But these are all breathing through your mouth to cool down your body. Now we'll finish with the called pranaho pranayam. Pranaho pranayam basically is a chanting pranayam. It's a u ma. A comes from the lower part of the lung with your chin mudra. U comes from the middle part of the lung with the chin mai mudra. Ma comes from the upper part of the lung with the Adhi Mudra. This is called your Pranaho Pranayam. We'll finish with the meditative pranayam, which is called alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. Let me show you first Pranaho Pranayam. Chin Mudra, spine straight, eyes closed. A from the lower part of the lung. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. In my mudra, ooh. Adhimudra Ma. We'll finish with the meditative pranayama, which is your alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. Initially, it looks like almost impossible, 
but in a practice you'll be doing it because in meditation what happens you have a thought process you generate a thought process daily you are generating thousands and thousands of thought processes but most of the thought processes are in the past and also for your future very little thought process for your present even for the present thought processes you have a, a all your repeat thought process so i have to do it come on saturday to this class in a meditation it called chitta vritti niroda it controls the chattering of your mind the repeat thought process goes away your thought process is still there they get into a file in a folder so mind stay calm throughout the whole day Let me show it how to do it. I'll be doing it little talking, but you'll be doing it in silence. Touch your index finger and thumb. And you notice that I'm changing my foot all the time. I'm activating both sides of the brain. That is called neuroplasticity. Visualize, close your eyes, visualize your breath. Visualize your breath, breathing out first through your nostril. Visualize air is coming through your nostril. Air is getting filtered in the nostril. Nose is like your personal air conditioner. Outside air is warm, it's cooling it down. The outside air is cool, it's warming it up. Air is going on the side of the nostril called turbinate. Turbine is, is like a channel in both sides and is generating a vortex. The vortex goes over your mucosa of the sinuses, releases a substance called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a potent vasodilator. It helps in coronary arteries and rest of the artery relaxation and preserving endothelial health. Endothelial health is our health. Nitric oxide is also an activator of parasympathetic tone. Other substances activating parasympathetic tone are called cyclic GMP, acetylcholine. In contrast to sympathetic tone, which are activates through your epinephrine and norepinephrine. Air is coming behind your throat, upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung, lower part of the lung, almost to the level of the belly button. And here the breath gets hold a little bit, called cable kumbhaka. I'm also noticing my mouth. My mouth is still full of saliva. And I've been talking to you almost hour and a half. So I have a parasympathetic activation. Visualize breath is coming out from a belly button in the lower part of the lung, middle part of the lung, upper part of the lung, coming out through your nostril. Outside the nostril, there's a prana, the life force. Breath is picking up prana. In yoga, only the, not only the lung breathes, our whole body breathes. Visualize the breath is bringing prana to the organ of healing. For me, I have a heart problem. I'm visualizing the prana is coming to my heart and it's healing my heart. If you have a back pain, you visualize prana is coming to your back and healing your back pain. If you have a knee pain, you visualize it's coming to your knee and healing your knee pain. Diabetes, feel your prana coming to your pancreas, healing your diabetes. Then bring your awareness to your nostril. Visualize your breathing out through your left nostril. Visualize your breathing in through your left nostril. Visualize your breathing out through your right nostril. I can clearly visualize I'm breathing in through right nostril. Breathing out through your left nostril.
close your eyes have a hand mudra keep your spine straight and do the alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril this is your most meditative pranayama practice this is your therapy Continue as long as you can without any effort. Slowly bring your hands in front of you. Touch your little finger and thumb. Separate your other finger. This is called your Padma Mudra. Lotus Mudra connects your body, mind and spirit. Slowly bring your hand close to your heart. Heart is the side of your soul. We always say the heart connects your mind. We memorize by heart. Yoga therapy, especially the power of breath, is the active ingredient of the yoga therapy. It causes your healing, mental wellness, spiritual wellness. Slowly bring your hands in front of your heart. This is called your heart chakra, anahata chakra, and finish with another palming and cupping. Rub your hands, rub your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, again, take the hand like a cup. Put it over your eyes like a cup. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. Activates the four cranial nerves, relaxes the ciliary muscles, increases the convexity of your lens. Massage your forehead. Massage your eyes. These muscles are all this all attached to the skin. So when you do that, all the skin line goes away. Massage back of your ear, front of your ear, inside the ear lobe, ear canal, ear lobe. This is the auricular branch of vagus nerve, activates your vagus nerve. Your hand massage in front of your neck, massage your carotid sinus, quiets down your cardiovascular system, nervous system. Take your hand to the back, massage your insertion of a trapezius and sternomastoid muscle. It is a, both muscles are supplied by cranial nerve. It's a wonderful practice. And this is the role of breath in yoga therapy. So I'm going to finish it today. And as long as I have a free time, as long as I don't have any other assignment, does not matter wherever I am. I'm here. I'm here now in Maryland in my daughter's house and I'm going to do it from here. This is their, your gym and the yoga room. Uh, I have a picture of green spider, you know. Anyway, let's finish it today and I'll see you again in next Saturday.